Once again, we're going back in time to show you the second e-bike that I have ever made. I'll show you every step from start to finish, so let's go. As with my first e-bike retrospective, I gotta hit you with that disclaimer slash warning. I documented this build long before I ever had any idea I was going to make a YouTube channel. Because of that, I don't actually have any video footage. With that being said, welcome to my TED Talk. As with all great e-bike builds, we start with the frame. This is your typical eBay special stealth clone. Coming off of my first build, I wanted to get a frame that was specific for e-bikes. Here I am measuring the frame so that I can buy a battery that's going to fit inside. Of course, I couldn't just leave the factory paint, so here I am prepping and applying my signature hex camo pattern. I have applied a similar paint job to a lot of my projects because I think it looks really cool. If you're curious as to the process and how I make these paint jobs, I'll leave a link in the description to a build in which I go way more in depth on how I do it. This frame might look very similar to my 30 bike, but I can assure you it is much heavier. For the forks, I went with the DNM USD 8. I didn't have any experience on what fork would be the best, so I just went with one that was going to fit. This frame comes with metal side panels, and I didn't want to paint them, so I just wrapped them in this carbon vinyl. And I must say, I do think that carbon complements the camo very well. Even though this was only the second e-bike I've ever made, the build process was actually fairly straightforward. I had more of a problem with my third e-bike than this one. Everything just seemed to go together pretty well. Maybe it's because they weren't used parts and I bought them all specifically for this build. After waiting several weeks, my battery finally arrived and it's a 72 volt, 30 amp hour pack. And just like my first e-bike build, I kind of made a mistake here as well. Here I am at my local motorcycle shop getting the tires put on the motor wheel and the front wheel. The hub motor is a QS273. This is just about the biggest hub motor you can put on an e-bike. It is totally massive and very heavy. I added a Cloud9 seat and a 203mm rotor up front. I threw on a matching disc on the back because I knew that this bike was going to be pretty powerful and I wanted to be able to stop very well. The controller is the Sabvaton SV72150. This will handle 150 amps RMS and even more peak. And just like my first e-bike, I made a mistake with the battery again, and I didn't get one that could handle the true potential of this platform. Here I am adding the mounts slash standoffs for the custom dash that I'm going to be making. This controller does have Bluetooth communication for tuning, but I wasn't able to get that going, so I went with a wired connection. As you know from my third e-bike, I love adding tons of LEDs, so here's more of that wiring and into the LED controller. It took me a bit to figure out where I wanted all of the LED strips to go. I'm also adding a buck converter that takes the 72 volts and drops it down to 12 volts to run all of the lighting. You guys might recognize this front panel because I actually used it on my third e-bike build and I borrowed a lot of the components from this second build onto my third build. After getting through all that wiring, I wanted to test up all the LEDs and make sure the controller and roughly where I wanted the dashboard was going to be and make sure it was all going to work correctly. The only real issue I ran into on this build, which is rare, was that the rear freewheel did not want to go on very well. I thought I had cross-threaded the housing, which would have basically ruined the motor. And for a short while, it was stuck on there, but I was able to finally get it off and after a lot of cleaning, I realized that the threads that they had given me were not matching. So I bought a new freewheel and that one went on much more smoothly. As you can see, I'm building out the dashboard and I did multiple iterations of this dashboard to try and tweak it and get it exactly how I envisioned it. The top panel was a little too dark and those switch covers, although they looked really cool, it made toggling the switches a lot more annoying than just having them open. 
With all the wiring taken care of, all I had to do was those last little tweaks to the dashboard and then I could finally ride. This bike was much faster and a lot funner to ride than my first bike. Coming from my first build, a lot of the things I wanted to change was a full suspension frame, which is much more comfortable, and I also wanted to switch to a hub motor because I didn't want to deal with any more chains and sprockets and things like that. I just wanted all the power going directly to the axle. There was only two things I didn't like about this build and one of them, the main one, was the battery. When they were making my battery, they asked me how many amps for the BMS. I had no idea, so I went with a conservative number because I didn't want to hurt the cells, so I told them 50 amps. Because of that, when I was really pushing the bike, the battery would actually cut out and shut down power temporarily. I eventually figured out what the problem was and tuned the controller accordingly so it wouldn't shut down, but this obviously limited power. I realized I had made a mistake when purchasing my battery and I should have gone for a much higher BMS. So my plan at this point was to take the battery and use it for another build, one that wasn't going to need as much power as this one. So this pack is actually in my third e-bike build, the Digi Camo build, which I'm sure you guys know about already. Because I commandeered this battery and controller for my third build, I basically had a frame and motor just waiting for a new battery and controller. I built this e-bike way back in 2018 and it's basically been sitting dormant for almost 4 years now. So I've had plans in the back of my mind for almost 4 years now on how to wake up this beast again and that is exactly what I'm going to do. But for now, please enjoy these shots of the completed build in its original state. But at the end of the video, I will show you a teaser of what's to come for this resurrection. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. I have so much more planned in terms of e-bikes, computers, keyboards, everything, so stay tuned. After nearly four months of waiting, I finally have a battery that is worthy of this e-bike. As you can see, it is a lot of power. Maybe too much power. Maybe so much that it doesn't even physically fit inside of the frame. I'm going to be creating a lot of problems for myself, but I also am going to be creating these solutions to these problems. So if you're interested in checking out the future of this build, please stay tuned. It's definitely going to be a fun one, but not without its challenges. Some very, very large challenges. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.